Welcome everyone once again. Let's talk about urban planning. And today we explore the world of the Iranian feminist movement, known as Woman, Life, Freedom. I would not dare to say in the original language. This movement has been met with brutal crackdowns from the Iranian government, but it has also captured the attention of the world through social media. And to let us know more about the movement, I invited Asma Mehan from Texas Tech University in the United States. So Asma will let us know how this movement is using digital art, graffiti, protests to create a physical and a virtual space for women's voices to be heard. So we will discuss with Asma um, the challenges, the opportunities that lie ahead for this movement and how it can inspire other feminist movements uh, around the globe. Asma, welcome to our episode. Thank you so much for your kind invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Perfect. Let us know then, Asma, um, why you felt the, the need, the relevance to study this movement in particular. And also, let us know a bit uh, about the movement for context. Sure. Um, so, um, as you mentioned before, the main inspiration for such starting this research is inspired by the recent woman life freedom movement, or what we call in, in Persian, in Farsi, Zan Zendegi Azadi movement. So inspiring from this recent movement, I, um, I, I ask uh, a different line of question. Uh, for example, how it's this specific movement focused on the intersection of digital activism and how it, it has been known as the feminist movement within Iran, as a, as a counter feminist movement in Iran. And it's, I think also it's important to, to add a little bit about the Iranian context. Uh, I think it's important to, to talk more about the Iranian context in, uh, uh, specifically because it's a place where traditional forms of protests are often, as you mentioned also before, severe, severely restricted. So I think this specific topic, uh, the topic of digital activism and feminist movement uh, within Iran, but also within this case study of the recent woman life freedom movement gains importance as it highlights how the specific digital platforms, the emerging digital platforms have become crucial spaces for marginalized groups. For example, the case of women uh, in repressive societies to voice their concerns, organize movements, and also foster the community solidarity. Mm -hmm. So the main aim for this research was uh, for me to explore the digital feminist placemaking in the context of this specific movement. And this specific uh, research and study offers a lens, a unique lens to understand the evolving dynamics of social movements in the digital age. So uh, I think it's important to underscore and highlight and emphasize the transformative potential of these digital spaces uh, in empowering women, uh, uh, for example, for this specific case. And also it draws attention to the broader implication of digital activism mm -hmm. for reshaping public discourse, but also contributing to the, so to the societal change. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this specific research is uh, um, the main idea was how these digital tools are utilized in resource limited setting to create the impactful so uh, social movements. And, and, and also um, at the end, I, I, uh, I had this, this transition toward the global shift uh, towards the new forms of resistance and community building in the digital era, which is, I think, it's a, it's an important emerging topics in our scholarship. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's follow up on that and explore a bit before you share uh, the most important uh, conclusions of your study. So, what was specifically missing out there in the research that prompted you to write about uh, uh, woman life freedom? Um. So. Um... I think the, the the published paper that we are discussing uh, about and my research um, sought to bridge this significant gap in understanding the role of digital spaces as alternative public spheres, especially in environments where traditional activism is limited or not allowed. 
So I was particularly interested in exploring how this digital art, digital graffiti, social media, online resources, uh, and online stories help to forge digital feminist spaces in, in, a, in a society where women's vo voices are often uh, uh, limited. So uh, this specific study delved into the complexities of digital feminist placemaking and looking at how these virtual environments uh, support community solidarity and resistance among women, by women. And by focusing on a specific case of Iran, a context mm -hmm. which I, I think also not widely been studied, my research aimed to provide unique insights into how women in restrictive societies creatively use digital tools in, in our era for articulating their demands, sharing experiences, and also driving social change. Promising. So let us know the most important, most relevant um, findings of your study. So I think key findings of this study include the innovative use of digital art, uh, as, I, as I mentioned through the different case studies in this research, and social media for feminist activism and how it facilitates through the women inside the country, but also through the diaspora and international organization outside the country, facilitate, facilitating the spread of feminist narratives. And uh, also digital placemaking, the, the keyword that I use as, as a key concept in this research, uh, I think it's important to mention and highlight about this specific concept, uh, which is with women creating virtual spaces that embody their hopes, their challenges, and their struggles acting as alternative public spheres for feminist expression. And also this, this study emphasized the digital platform's role in building international solidarity uh, for uh, this specific case of women life freedom movement in Iran, which, which helped to connect Iranian women's issues to global feminist movement. I think it, this, this domino effect that happened is really, really important and interesting to study because it demonstrated women's uh, adaptability and resilience in using digital tools to challenge patriarchal structures but also highlighting digital activism and these forms of the new forms of global solidarity uh, through these platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So you highlight the innovative use of uh, digital art and feminism activism, either internal or in the diaspora, digital placemaking and uh, digital platforms in building international solidarity. And you write in your article, I would like to follow up on this, that there are lessons to be learned by these three um, points that you highlighted, lessons to be learned either by policymakers and by citizens in general. So let us know more about those. Sure, I think the findings of this study have significant implication for both uh, public policies and governments, but mm -hmm. also for, for individuals. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, I'm focusing on public policies, I think it's this, this research underscores the needs for governments and policymakers to recognize and support digital platforms as legitimate spaces for civic engagement and activism. And uh, also, I think this calls for uh, this, this specific study was a call for action for the incorporation of digital feminist perspectives in policymaking, ensuring that the voices and experiences of women are reflected in decision that affect their lives. And, and, uh, and also, um, I, I would like to highlight again uh, the, the emphasis for the critical need to safeguard digital rights and digital freedoms, which is, I think, also essential for these emerging forms of activism in our era. And focusing on individual perspective, I think this specific research encourages women to recognize and leverage digital platform and as powerful tools for advocacy and community building. And also it has the potential to influence individual choices by raising awareness about the challenges faced by women in restrictive societies, uh, which, which fosters the global sense of empathy and solidari solidarity uh, about, uh, about this. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think in general, the research serve as a catalyst for individuals to not only understand but actively 
participate in digital movements, contributing to a more equitable and inclusive digital sphere. Mm -hmm. Let's switch to academia now. You write in your article, potential venues for future research, focusing uh, more, more comparative studies, long-term studies over time. So what's ahead of us now, academically speaking? Um, I think that's a really interesting question, and I, I would like also to explore the future uh, research and future the different several avenues for future inquiry. So one of the key areas of, for future research is the exploration of digital feminist placemaking in different socio-political contexts. Mm -hmm. So investigating how women in other regions and other parts of the world utilize digital platforms for activism could provide comparative insights and comparative perspective to understand the digital feminist global impact. So this specific focus was in the context of Iran and Middle East. So I would like to see how it can be translated in Europe, in, in different parts of Asia, in Australia, in, in, in Africa. I think that's, that's an important uh, um, uh, area for the future research. Another area for future study is the long-term effects of digital feminist activism on societal norms and gender dynamics. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand that the sustainability of these movements and evolution of these movements through the time and how it can be studied through the time. Um, so uh, so focusing on, on, on limitation, also it's important to note that this specific study primarily focused on the Iranian context and on the recent woman life freedom a movement as a case study, which may not fully represent the diverse experiences and strategies of digital feminist activism globally. And, and also I would like to add that the research relied on social media and uh, and online uh, and, and different uh, different form, forms of online narratives, but also uh, the the digital art, digital graffiti, which may not fully represent the offline impacts and grassroots movements associated with digital feminism. So I think definitely further research could address these limitations by incorporating a more diverse range of geographic geographical context and also exploring the interplay between online activism and also offline social changes. Mm -hmm. Many, many venues still ahead to, to explore this topic. Asma, if you had to sum up this episode, your, uh, the topic you've been discussed in one or two sentences, what would it be? So I think the most important takeaway from this talk is the transformative power of digital platforms to amplify marginalized voices and foster social change. And also the, the key message here is that digital activism is not just a tool, but a critical space for insurgency and community building, and especially in the context where traditional forms of protests are limited and banned. And, and also it's, uh, this research is a call to action for all to recognize, acknowledge, and support digital feminist movement as a legitimate and powerful forces for uh, societal transformation. And also I, I, I hope that this study serves as an inspiration showing that change is possible and is often begins with a single voice amplified through the power of digital connectivity. Uh, Yes. Great episode, Asma. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. So for those who are watching this episode on YouTube, uh, all the resources and materials that Asma uh, has shared with us um, are available on the Let's Talk About Urban Planning website. And you can also listen to this episode uh, wherever you get your podcast. There is a newsletter you can subscribe to to um, be informed of new episodes. And you can follow us on Twitter at Cogitatio LTA.